is Sri Leka. I'm a technical team member in GDSC, and this session a session four, an introduction to web development, building a calculator. I'm Shalvani, a technical and non-technical member of GDSC. Um, here is the basic agenda of this event. So first we're going to make a calculator using HTML and next styling it using CSS. Uh, to make the calculator more interactive, we are using JavaScript. And this is the basic overview of how the calculator is going to look. So let's get started with the hands-on session. Uh, we're using VS Code for this particular session. Uh, so let's start, uh, let's make a file, a web development, and we create three different folders and files in that. Uh, CSS, HTML, and JavaScript. We'll start with HTML first. So the code starts with We'll use HTML tag and then so we can see what changes it makes here. So we just got started. So all we see is a white screen. And let's give this page a heading. Uh, let's make it my calculator. We can parallelly see the changes in the open live server, server over here. So we see calculator here. That's heading of this page. And next, let's get started with the body of this page for which we're using body tag. Uh, so to make the calculator, we are using property table. So for this, I'm using table. Table tag. And next, we, we have two different things, table rows and table columns. As you can see here, this is table rows in the table, and these are the columns. So first, we'll be using table. ED is data cell, a specific data cell in a certain column or row, for which column span. Uh, we can take it as three for this particular table. Uh, this is three. Uh, table column span and we just close the tag. And it's input type. Input type in the first line is text. write text here and then the ID of the input type is result. Here we're taking result and we have to close this. See what changes it made. Oh uh, yeah, we got a table, uh, I mean just a box where the result will be displayed. And, and here right next to the result, we want a clear button for which we'll be using button. So here we used input type text. So the next cell is going to be button. So input type is Input type is button. I'll just take it. The value in that particular input type is the letter C, which stands for Clio. Just close the input type. So, yeah, we got a clear button over here. So, moving on to the next row, uh, the second row, which you can use the take. We are. Um, so here we want four buttons in a single row, like how we got here. So we'll be taking, following the same pattern for every cell in that particular row. We'll be using T, D, and input type of every cell here is button.
type is button and the values and the value in the first button we're taking is one so here we should use on click function which we'll be discussing in the javascript like while writing the javascript we, we can come back to html code and make changes so yeah we close this and it's the same thing we have to just write the same code for all other buttons just keep changing the values so the second button is two and the third button on the same row is three both button is yeah we can probably take a uh, addition sign so this is about row one um so yeah we can see four different buttons over here and next for row two we have to use this tr again it's pretty much the same code for every other row so you, you can just simply copy paste that uh, and make sure to change the values for because every button holds a different value like every data cell in this particular calculator holds a different set of value so the second row it's four five uh, six and a uh, subtraction sign and the same goes with the third and fourth row so let's do it for row number three where the values are seven, eight, nine, and yep, we can take multiplication sign. And the last row, so it's the same code again. Uh, what else signs do we need? We need a division sign. And next, a uh, zero, and yeah, equal to sign. And a decimal if you're using decimal values. So that's pretty much about. Yeah, let, let's see how it looks. That got updated. Uh, and now it's all different data cells and we really don't have a border over here. We can just add border to that particular table which we created. So we can use it, change it over here, border. So we can take whatever value we want, uh, depends on what thickness. Uh, so here we can take two. And this is how thickness of the border looks like. And Or we can change it to one or three. Uh, let's go with three. Mm, yeah, that's pretty much done. The HTML part is pretty much done. So like the on click part will be adding next when we are doing javascript so let's style this page uh, before doing that let's just link the css over here link uh, so just change the name to whatever C css file you're using uh, in this particular folder my css file name is cl.css so just put cl.css like this and that's done um let us also link the javascript which we're gonna add so that's script and the javascript file name is cl.js Yep, that's done. We linked both CSS and HTML here. We have nothing in CSS and HTML file, so we see no change over here. It's the same, the, just the HTML code. Um, let's style the calculator using CSS. Uh, first, the very first thing we used in HTML is the heading, the H1. So we'll be styling that first. So here we just take H1 and probably change the color like the font size so the font size let's just keep it larger and next the margin on the left so uh, it helps us move 
the heading to the center of the page, so we'll just change it. Yeah, this one. Mm. And next margin left, probably we can take. Yeah, and next uh, mark. Yeah, that, that's pretty much about styling H1. Moving on to. Uh, we'll be styling the table, the data cells, like the color and stuff. So let's take input type. So input type, the very first thing we're going to style is the button type. So input type is button. And then flap brackets, so. Uh, these are the buttons like one, two, three, click and so on. We can probably change the background color of this particular button. So for which we, you can use back, background color. Uh, so I'm going with aqua for this. Uh, let's see how it looks. Yeah. Next height of that height of each button will probably I can take 60 pixels. Yeah, um, and next the weight width. So the width of the each button. So I want it to look like square, so you can take height and width equal. So that's perfect square. And that's all about styling the button. So now moving on to styling the type uh, type text. So it's the same thing. Uh, let's just text and it's flower brackets again. So for text, uh, we're not using any the background color. We're keeping it white. So let's just. Yeah, probably this. And then font size. Yeah, we're using larger font size for this. And then height of this particular. Uh, here we are styling this particular text box over here where the result is displayed or like when you click on every button, the certain value is displayed and that particular bo box. So we are styling that. So let's change height of that button. You can take 100 pixel. Yeah, we can go with this. And usually we want text to be on the rightmost side of the box. So we use this particular thing, text align, uh, which you can put it right. So uh, we style this, but we can't really display the values because we didn't use the function on click yet, so which we'll be doing in a while. So that's pretty much about styling using CSS and the HTML code. Uh, we'll just get the table here, like to the middle of the page. So for which we'll be using table. Or the same thing where which we used for H1. So I can probably take it on a pixel. OK. So we'll keep it 300 for this. Um, that's pretty much it. So it's almost in the center of the page and the heading. So now we'll be making this calculator interactive using JavaScript. So we already linked both JavaScript and CSS over here. So uh, just adding code to JavaScript file, you, you can make this page interactive. Like you can perform all logic 
arithmetic operations over here using the functions which we mentioned. So, Sharon will be doing that. The objective of today's uh, session is to create a calculator, right? So now we've created a table, but it doesn't really behave like a calculator. So for that, we need JavaScript. So in a calculator, we have three functions. One is to um, clear the input box or the console, and one is to uh, evaluate the expression. Like when you're pressing the equal to button, the calculator will evaluate the expression and give you the result. And the other one is when you're pressing any types of buttons like plus or any numeric one, the um, output should be displayed on the console. So we have three functions. So we're going to have to include that in the JavaScript part. So for JavaScript, we have to first start with the script tag. And in JavaScript, if we're going to define a function, then we should first start with function and then the function name. So First, let's do it for uh, displaying the values on the console. So function. For display, we can just put DIS and then um, we have brackets. So um, whenever we're clicking the button over here, the value should be displayed on the output screen. So for that to happen, we're going to use this um, uh, event called on click. So we're going to have to embed that within the input tag itself, the input button tag. So over here, we can put on click, which means that something will happen if you click the button. So right now we just want the value of that button to be displayed on that output screen. So um, we want the function display to be called, right? So we'll put uh, DIS and uh, we have to pass a value. So over here, when we're clicking one, we want one to be displayed. So in the brackets, we'll put one. And similarly for all the buttons, we have to do this. Um, for the equal to button, we don't want that to be displayed on the console. Like uh, when we press equal to, we just want the expression uh, to be evaluated. So that would be a separate function. Now for the function definition, we have to include the method document dot get um, element ID. So, so over here. Um, we have this input type, which is text, and we want it to be displayed over here. So for this input type um, tag, we've included the ID to be result. So since we want that particular input type, um, for the ID part, we'd put result. And um, we have the attribute value, right, in um, the input tag. So whatever value we put into that input tag, that is the value which is going to be shown on that button. So we put dot value. And um, we're not always just going to have one um, number on the screen, right? We'll have several numbers and we'll have the arithmetic operators. So if you want all of that to be shown, we're going to have to use the plus uh, uh, operator which also denotes concatenation. So we'll do plus or minus. And um, val. So over here in the on the on click uh, functions, we're passing a value, right? So this value is going to be uh, a parameter. So we'll keep it as val over here. So whatever value is being passed through that function, that value is going to be concatenated over there. So if we save it. So this is for the display part. Now if we want to evaluate the function, we're going to have to put function uh, sol solve. And uh, there's no parameters being passed over here. Um, 
So um, for uh, evaluating the expression, so we first have to store the expression on the console as um, into a variable. So we'll put um, and uh, we'll put the same thing. want only the value and another variable which evaluates that expression. So we can use this in, inbuilt function called eval and x in it. And we want to print the value of y on this console because that will give you the output. So again, we'd put document dot get element And we'd um, assign it to y. And we need another function for clear. So again, we'd have to embed on click on this part. So we have on click equal to CR, say CLR over here. And even for the equal to part, we have on click. We can just keep it as SOL. So these functions will be called once you press the button. And when we press clear, there should be nothing shown. So we just equate it to nothing. So this is for the JavaScript part. Now we save it. Uh, let's put 65 plus 3. We get 68. And we want to clear it. So you can use several operations and make it work like a calculator. And you can even design it more if you wish to. So this is how you make a calculator using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Uh, hope you learned something from this session. Thank you.